everyone and welcome back to Midnight Theories and if you're new here, welcome to Midnight Theories. Today, we are following the journey of Dal Shabit, a talented girl group that tasted success as soon as they debuted but had to jump through many obstacles along the way that hindered their progress. But before we begin, this video is sponsored by Clipbox. Have you ever wanted K-pop merch and Korean snacks sent directly to your door? Clipbox is this awesome K-pop subscription box that offers themed boxes from groups such as BTS, Blackpink, EXO, and TWICE. They also offer a variety of items ranging from apparel, stationery, keychains, posters, and so much more. You can also customize the box by selecting one or more biases to fit your preference. Grab your box by clicking the link down below. And don't forget to use code MIDNIGHT at checkout for 5% off. Former leader Vicky was a Star Empire trainee, and she was trained to debut with Nine Muses. She was also a backup dancer for So and Young, Jewelry, and Boss. Seti, the current leader, was a well-experienced trainee. She had a professional gymnast background and won a gold medal at the National Aerobics Competition. She was also a live backup dancer for Nason and Go, and she appeared in One Tis and B for their song Very Good. The young idol also attended high school with Rainbow Yunhe and majored in entertainment broadcasting in university. Main dancer and lead vocalist Ui was a former Media Line Entertainment trainee before planning her roots at Happy Face Entertainment. While at Media Line, she was set to debut in a five-member girl group called Viva Girls, but the project unfortunately fell through. She won first place at the 2009 Korean Dance Festival, won first place at the 12th National Aerobics Contest, and she won first place at the 2009 Seoul Youth Cultural Festival. Lead rapper, vocalist, and visual, Ayoung attended a university majoring in entertainment and film before becoming a trainee. Lead dancer, vocalist, and visual, Jio, also attended the same university, and she was also a live backup dancer with Seti for Nathan and Go. Main rapper and vocalist Khan studied at Soul Arts College prior to her debut. She was also an extra in the iconic Caribbean Bay CF, starring 2PM and Girls' Generation in 2010. And lastly, Makne, main vocalist and face of the group Subin. She had one of the most difficult times as a trainee. She moved alone to Seoul at the young age of 15. Her family suffered financial hardships growing up. So when she couldn't pay the rent for her room, she would go to a nearby hamburger shop that was open 24-7 and order a single cup of coffee and slept the night there. While working in Seoul, she was a background dancer and appeared in Taeyang's MV, I Need a Girl. Gearing up to showcase their talent with the world, these six talented young ladies train hard to showcase their talent. It's the year 2010, girl groups are being pumped out left and right. Rumors hit the media that mega music duo E-Tribe are debuting their very own girl group. E-Tribe are best known for producing top charting hits such as G by Girls' Generation, Hush by Miss A, You Go Girl by Lee Hyori, and Ya 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 by Tiara. So it seemed like any group would do extremely well in the charts under the hands of this duo, and it became massive news. Initially, E-Tribe denied the rumors immediately, yet, Later that year in December, news of the duo's smaller label Happy Face Entertainment made a huge announcement unveiling their first girl group known as Dal Shabit. The name Dal Shabit was inspired by a children's storybook Dal Sherbet, Tal meaning moon. Tal Sherbet is a story about a grandmother who makes sherbet out of a moon. Not long after the release, the book's popularity soared among children, recording sales of 28,000 copies in four months. Before the group even debuted, there was mixed reactions starting off with the group's name itself. Upon the release of the group's teaser photos, a number of netizens, 926 to be exact, protested against them for using the name related to a children's book while the girls sported, quote, short dresses and bottoms. Even the author of the book wasn't too pleased with the selection of the name. According to the author, Pekina, she alleges she received a phone call from an entertainment company asking for permission to use the title of her book to name an upcoming girl group. Peck claims that she denied the request and had this to say on Twitter. They are trying to use the title of a children's book to name a sexy girl group. Tal Sherbet isn't a name of an ice cream or coffee shop. It is a title of a creative picture book for Korean children. Even if this is not an illegal act, it is immoral and unconscionable behavior. Happy Face Entertainment did confess that they contacted the writer to use the name, but affirmed that they are in their full legal right to use the name, Tal Sherbet, because the two names are different and hold two different meanings. Despite their little hiccup, there was much more excitement and anticipation for the group's debut, primarily credited to the popularity and mega success of E-Tribe's production for Girls' Generation song titled G. Tal Shabit also attracted attention overseas in Japan due to their favorability of any songs produced under E-Tribe. Tal Shabit received the debut date of January 3, 2011 with their single Super Duba Diva, making them the first idol girl group to debut that year. 
Super Duper Diva was a colorful, catchy, and upbeat track that displayed the group's fun and youthful side. Their debut was seen as a success, peaking at number 9 on the con charts and promoted heavily on music shows. Even Sports Soul conducted a survey that named the single the second most addicting song and the second most popular choreography by the end of 2011. It was safe to say the group left a strong first impression. As soon as their promotions ended in March, Tal Shabit headed back to the studio to prepare for the first comeback. The public wanted more Tal Shabit, and the girls were eager to get back on stage. Just three months after their debut, the girls released Pink Rocket on April 13, 2011. The six members expressed their wacky side with this novelty track and charmed viewers with their whimsical visuals. The single received slightly more praise by its increasing album sales and ranking higher on the charts compared to their debut. Pink Rocket was promoted for over a month at events and music shows fell short of a first place win. To further promote the group, they starred in their very own reality shows titled Sweet Sweet Story and Cool Friends that let their fans peek into the lives of these young idols and follow them on the road to success. At the beginning of August of 2011, Happy Face began releasing teaser photos for the members individually. These teaser photos once again met backlash for what the netizens deemed overtly sexual due to the members' short and revealing clothing. This made Happy Face adjust their concept and outfits to appear more favorable to the general public. Just in time for summer, Tal Shabit released their most successful single yet, titled Bling Bling on August 10th, 2011, to cool you off during the summer heat. The girls of Tal Shabit transformed into disco girls with this 70s inspired concept that had taken over girl groups during the summer of 2011. For example, we had Tiara's Roly Poly and Nine Muses Bigato also took inspiration from the disco scene. Bling was promoted heavily across music shows and the group was in hot demand, winning over the public's attention. Tal Shabit was easily becoming a crowd favorite and continued the path of becoming monster rookies. The group even had the opportunity to showcase their acting skills on the popular music drama Dream High for a short cameo. After a successful year full of accomplishments, it was finally time for the end of the year award shows where groups compete and bask in the fruits of their labors. Tad Chabot was nominated in multiple categories and dominated winning almost all of them. They won the Popularity Award for the 19th Republic of Korea event, News Award, Best Rookie Award at the 2011 Bugs Music Awards, Top 50 Songs at number 41, and Top New Artist of 2011 at the Sumpe Gaio Awards. And lastly, they were nominated for Best New Female Artist at the 13th Mnet Asian Music Awards. At the time, Tal Shabit were unaware of their success. Seti shared with her viewers that the group just assumed that these type of opportunities and achievements just happen to every group once they debut. The group had proved themselves to be the monster rookie girl groups of 2011 and performed at these events collaborating with several artists for special stages. Unfortunately for the group's successful streak, one particular performance completely demolished their reputation and their fanbase in seconds. The end of the year award shows and festivals are held to celebrate artists and award their accomplishments. These events typically unite groups for special performances. At the 2011 SBS Music Festival, popular rookie groups B1A4 and Dal Shabe share the stage for a fun collaboration performance. This leads to the forgotten extreme fan war between the fandoms of B1A4's Panas and Dal Shabe's fandom Darlings. During their two-minute performance, there is this quick, and I mean super quick, part in the choreography where B1A4 graced their hands on the members of Tal Shabit's legs and Tal Shabit body rolls against the boys of B1A4. It took less than five seconds to create chaos on both sides of their fandoms. After the performance, malicious comments flooded the forums and blogs attacking Tal Shabit. One of the rumors circulating online was specifically targeting Seti. A user online claimed that they asked Seti for an autograph and handshake, which the idol rejected. There was also rumors that Seti rejected one of the members' handshakes of B1A4. These comments took a toll on Seti and she went online to address the slanderous comments and name-dropped a specific fandom impulsively. Seti's desperate plea to Banas added more fuel to the fire and caused a disastrous chain of events. Banas were riled up online and Seti was forced to do some damage control by writing an apology letter. This made the situation die down for the time being, but just a week away, a popular event where idol groups gathered together was just around the corner. It's the beginning of 2012 and it's time for the Idol Star Athletic Championship, also known as ISAC for short. Rumors spawned that Dal Shabashetti and the group's van would be thrown raw eggs if anyone spotted her in public. Panas took it one step further and claimed that Darlings were a kidnapping and raping Panas. This situation got so out of hand that the police had to intervene. 
the police officials revealed there weren't any disturbance or crimes committed during the Idol Star Athletic Championship. There was nothing out of the ordinary that occurred, nor there are any reports of such behavior. Happy Face Entertainment also released a statement about the rumors, imploring netizens to stop the harassment of their artists. Sunny went back online to express her feelings on the situation. Shortly after this chaos, on January 10th, 2012, a separate incident occurred where Tal Shabbat's official website was hacked. Fans who visited Tal Shabbat's homepage were met with several pop-ups that prevented them from entering the site. The pop-ups had a picture of B1A4 with the message, Why are you messing with those banas? B1A4 fans had also put on several notices and posts about B1A4 on other sections of Tal Shabbat's homepage, such as their schedule. Tal Shabbat and B1A4's agencies came to an agreement to not let these rumors affect themselves or their relationship, and banas are now known to be a rather quiet fandom now. All while this situation was in motion, Tal Shabbat had to continue practicing and preparing for their next comeback and completing schedules and activities as normal. On January 26, the group returned with a dramatic transformation with their single Hit You. Tal Shabbat had entered new territory with this fierce and mature concept and reaped the benefits of the shift, awarding the group their first number one album and selling the most albums they had yet. Following the success of Hit You, Happy Face announced Tal Shabbat would return with their first studio album and there would be some lineup changes to come. Later, Vicky would be party ways with the group and focus on a solo career, while Seti would take her place as leader and a new member named Ui would join the group. To hype up and promote their studio album, the company acquired customized Lamborghinis, which were driven around popular areas of South Korea. The cars were dubbed Tal Shabbat Supercars, and the members would ride the cars, making appearances at their showcases and guerrilla events. Their much-anticipated single, Mr. Bang Bang, was then released on June 5th. Once again, the group returned with a slightly different concept from when we last saw them. Following a short hiatus, Tal Shabbat went back to Wacky with their next comeback titled Have, Don't Have on November 13th. Happy Face would also release another version of the MV getting even wackier. This experimental track was reminiscent of their past single Bling Bling, sporting the retro disco flair and still kept that Tal Shabbat charm. A year later, the song would be named the most popular song by a girl group in Korean fashion stores, GS Shop. A special music video for their song, Four Darlings, was released a week later to thank their fans for sticking by them and supporting them all these years. It's that time of year again for the end of the year award shows, and Dal Shabbat came in hot, winning every category they were nominated for. Although their success was continuing to rise, and the group was decorated with several awards, they still fell flat of winning first place at a music show. Tal Shabbat debuted in the midst of the girl group renaissance. This was the period in time where every existing company began pumping out girl groups to supply the demand, and even new companies emerged trying to debut their own girl group to get a cut. Nevison's question, how much more can the market take before it becomes oversaturated, while others said the industry was already at the point of oversaturation. This meant Dal Shabbat was in heavy competition with dozens of other girl groups, specifically DSP's Rainbow and Star Empire's Nine Muses competing for the same categories and awards. This period was really known as the battle royale for girl groups as they fought to stay relevant. Nine Muses, Tal Shabbat, and Rainbow, the triple threat known as Nal Da Rain, was in constant competition with each other, battling it out to conquer that first place win. Although they were constantly competing with each other, none of the groups ever received their first win. Tal Shabbat took a mini hiatus after their last single and released in OST It's You, for the drama All About My Romance on May 15, 2013. Their first official release for 2013 would be one of their most popular songs, Be Ambitious, that was released on June 19. Be Ambitious had the perfect beat for a catchy summer hit, but broadcasting stations were not too happy with the song's lyrics. Broadcasters deemed the lyrics unfit to air on television because of the sexual context and demanded Happy Face to change the lyrics. Happy Face complied and changed the lyrics to fit the station's standards. Two days later, the group addressed a controversy at their showcase. Following the controversy, the single was protested against by a men's right group. On July 1st, Man of Korea filed an injunction to completely ban further distribution of Be Ambitious. The group stated, The lyrics in the music video of Be Ambitious depreciates both women and men. It is harmful to the youth. The music video also contains scenes that depreciate the 600,000 soldiers that are working hard in their enlistment. On July 11th, 2013, Happy Face Entertainment and Man of Korea held a joint conference where they discussed the lawsuit. Following the conference, Man of Korea officially announced that they would be dropping their lawsuit against Dal Shabbat's Be Ambitious. 
Happy Face Entertainment stated, There is no intent to depreciate the image of soldiers whatsoever. So we cleared up the misunderstanding through several negotiations and peacefully came to an agreement. Todd Shabbat had jumped over obstacles time and time again, but continued to stay committed to their promotions, usually releasing three singles a year. This, however, changed this year, with Tal Chavez halted activities for the rest of the year. This may or may not have been due to a financial hit because of the lawsuit or because the company ended their relationship with E-Tribe. This gave the members time to relax and focus on solo activities. Seri and Subin made a short appearance on My Love from the Star, a popular Korean drama at the time. Ayoung became serious about her acting career, working on several dramas. Chiol received her first major acting role in a short film and participated in a celebrity version of MasterChef Korea. And lastly, Uwe released her first solo track OST for web drama Infinite Power. After a silent year with little Dal Shave content, the group reinvented their image and released their seventh single BBB on January 8, 2014. If you thought their first concept shift was major, well, this comeback displayed a darker, immature model image and redefined their familiar energetic synth-pop sound. This would also be the first single and album not produced by E-Tribe. Their promotional period was short yet successful. Things really started to look up for the group and luck was on their side. Unfortunately, on May 23, 2014, Subin was involved in a serious car accident returning from Seoul from Busan where she was filming for a reality show. The van had overturned and was reported to be completely wrecked. Police reported negligent driving was the cause of the accident. Subin was admitted to a nearby hospital and later moved to Seoul, where she underwent surgery for her injuries. Later in October of 2014, Uye was hospitalized and received surgery for a collapsed lung. She has reportedly received surgery for the same condition in the past and took a break from group activities to focus on recovering. With two members out for recovery, the group faced another hiatus. In the meantime, Subin began to pick up a new hobby while recovering in the hospital. During her hospitalization, Subin began songwriting and working on new material for the group. Subin co-wrote and co-produced Dal Shabbat's ATP and single Joker, making her the first girl group member in K-pop to produce a whole album for her group. After a year-long drought without the group, Dal Shabbat victoriously returned with their jazz-inspired single, Joker, on April 15th. Tan Shabe had long left her little sister image and now showcased their seductive charm, luring in new listeners. The song was described to portray the love story between Joker and Harley Quinn. The song was immediately banned for its explicit choreography, quote, harsh lyrics, and revealing costumes. The company quickly adjusted what they needed so that they could promote their song, which lifted the ban. The members did an interview with Ilgan Sports, where they were asked about the controversy. Subin replied, We didn't think such a thing would happen. Many said that it was just noise marketing scheme, but we really didn't mean to do that. On November 4th, Bad Shabbat made their Japanese debut with their single Heart to Love and their greatest hits album, The Best. The single debuted on the Oricon charts at number 16 in the first day and number 37 in the first week. On December 8th, Chiol and Khan were confirmed to leave the group after their contract expired with Happy Face Entertainment. The rest of the members re-signed with the company and continued to promote as a quartet. On January 5th, Dal Chabot released their ninth mini-album and their music video for their title track, Someone Like You. The group later came back with their 10th and final single, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, on September 29th, 2016. Their last two singles really didn't stand out from their previous singles and fell into the sea of other girl group tracks released around the same time. On August 23, 2017, Happy Face Entertainment announced that Subin will be joining the unit, a survival show created to help former and struggling idols to reboot their careers. Unfortunately, Subin could not participate on the show due to overseas activities and would be replaced by Seri and Wui. Seri placed 23rd during the semifinals, while Wui placed 7th, making her a member of the show's Project Girl group, known as Unity. After 7 years of hard work and dedication, on December 14, 2017, Happy Face Entertainment announced that Seri, Subin, and Ayoung did not renew their contracts to focus on their own careers. Following the expiration of their contracts, the group was said not to be disbanded and future activities of the 4-member group remain to be discussed. Two years since a full group appearance, Dal Shabbat reunited on January 6, 2019 to celebrate their 8th anniversary. They got together and posted photos and videos online. Even their two former members, Jill and Khan, were present and introduced themselves as members, which caused darlings to speculate if a six-member promotion was in the works. 
We did not receive any comeback, but Tal Shaba did hold a photo exhibition, Be Ambitious, titled after the Group 7 single. The same day, the members announced through their social media that Jill and Khan had rejoined the group. Although they had rejoined the group, Tal Shaba remained in a gray area. They haven't had a comeback since 2016, and City is adamant that the group did not disband. In an interview with BNT, City states that the group is still together. On the contrary, on the 2020 reboot show called Miss Back, where Subin participated, they stated that the girl group disbanded in 2017. I guess we could also factor in a global pandemic that affected every group and company back in 2020 that may have halted any advancements on the group's possible comebacks or events. As for the girls now, Seti is currently with agency as Stream Entertainment. She recently released a song titled When You Call Me. She is heavily active on social media and runs her own YouTube channel called Seti Day, where she posts a variety of content from Q&As, interviews, covers, and so much more. I joined Sidus HQ after her contract with Happy Face Entertainment ended and focused on acting. In 2019, she opened up a YouTube channel called Today Chol Ayung to post vlogs. She also has a joint booty channel called 100 Sisters and is still active on social media. In 2021, she signed an exclusive contract with IAA Entertainment. After her first departure with the group in 2015, she will join Jellyfish Entertainment. She then participated in the company's winter project Jellybucks Jelly Christmas 2016. On January 20th, 2019, Flyup Entertainment announced that Oi has signed with the agency, where she will be focusing on her activities as an actress. She has been busy acting in several dramas and web series and has a new up-and-coming drama called Business Proposal in 2022. In 2017, Khan opened up her own online shop on Naver with her boyfriend and later in 2019 opened an online fashion shop called Birming. After leaving Happy Face Entertainment in 2015, Khan halted idol activities and married her longtime non-celebrity boyfriend on June 23, 2018. All the Dal Shabbat members were present and performed at her wedding. Sylvan began her solo career in 2016 and left Happy Face Entertainment in 2017. She later joined Key East in 2018. On February 18, 2018, she announced her new stage name Tal Sylvan and released her first single under the agency and name called Catch Up, which was released on March 5th. She also started her own company in 2019 called Tal Sylvan Company. In 2020, Tal Subin participated on the reboot program titled Miss Back, a program to reboot the careers of quote, forgotten idols and bring them back into the limelight. In 2020, she was involved in a car accident while going to film for Miss Back. After leaving the group back in 2012, Vicky made her film debut in 2014. She began her acting career and later signed with MBK Entertainment under her new name, Bek Dan but she left the company in 2016. She also has an account online where she teaches K-pop dances called Dance Vicky. Khan Shabba debuted in a chaotic mess where girl groups were being pumped out almost weekly and survived as long as they did because they left a strong first impression and outdid themselves with every comeback, making them monster rookies. However, with the level of success that they were reaching, they had to overcome several obstacles which threw them off their course and hindered their progress. It's always interesting to hear idols or groups that were successful early on explain that they were unaware of their own level of popularity and success until it was gone. Even the members of TR had said something similar. I know the members are now following their own path, but I really do hope they pull off a rainbow and make a special comeback one last time. Do you think that Shabbat will return to the stage once again? Also, do you think the group's career could have turned out completely different if it weren't for those few hiccups along the way? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. Once again, thank you to Cloopbox for sponsoring this video. And don't forget to grab your box by clicking the link below and use code MINI at checkout for 5% off. And as always, thank you for watching and enjoy your stay.